Okay, so this is one of a series of videos where I'm going to be talking about the tools that are available to you over here on the left hand side. Uh, normally I'll talk about several different tools per video. This one may turn out to be a two-parter, but we'll see. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the brush tool. And you have the brush, the pencil, the color replacement, and the mixer brush tool. Um, now the brush tool, if you open it here, you can control the size of the tool, the hardness, you can choose different brushes, uh, you can spin the brushes, which in, you know, with a round one it wouldn't matter, but if you choose some other type of brush, and we'll get into that later, you may want to spin it. Um, some of these, they look the same, but they're really not. Uh, this is just the standard soft round brush that you would use with your mouse and the hard round brush that you would use with your mouse. Now these, uh, it depends on your pressure, will change the size, and that's both of these. And on these, the pressure will change the opacity. And those four brushes are to be used with a uh, tablet and pen, which I do not have. So I use mainly this soft brown brush to do my coloring. And I'm going to turn the size up here so you can see it. And this gives a soft, diffuse edged line. If I switch to the hard brush, you can see the difference. But you can also go in between. You can make one that's about 50% hard. So those, those choices are up to you and what you need at the moment. Uh, we also have, I'm going to skip these brushes for the moment because I'll talk about them under another tool. Um, and these are more soft brushes I believe they have to do with using a, a tablet and pen. Uh, and then you have all different kinds. This is square charcoal brush and it, it, it looks like you're drawing with a piece of charcoal. Um, this is a watercolor brush and it gradually builds up density so every time you cross it it gets a little darker and a little darker. Um, I'm not going to go through every single brush here, or we will be here all day. Um, but if you just point at it and, and let, leave your pointer there, it'll come up what it is, and that'll give you a clue. And then just play with them. This is watercolor. Uh, and then we get down here further, and we've got some like uh, this one. Let me clear my canvas here. If I go in and uh, just color the canvas black and switch to the white, and this is a star, and it makes a star for you, just a single click. Uh, grass, this is dune grass. So let's go back to the, that. And I'm going to leave the white, but I'm going to make the black a green color instead. And if we drag that across, you can see it's alternating between the green and the white and giving you all kinds of shades in between. I could also make this white another color, uh, such as orange. Oops. Orange. Okay. And then it'll give you a whole different effect if you change the colors. And this one next to it is similar, but it's a different kind. It's just regular grass. And this one tips left, right, straight, changes colors, flips back and forth. Um, clear that again. And then you've got your leaf, and I really like the leaf. It's a big favorite of mine. This one scatters leaves. This is great if you're doing like fall colors and you want to color a tree with different shades. And it's just wonderful. 
And there's other leaves here. These are a little bit more transparent. I don't usually use those because I don't I don't like the transparency. Now let's go to let's try one of these. And this one is called there's a little pop up. like that one. Spatter. Let's go with spatter. This one makes a spatter. It's kind of small. Let me turn the size up. This is supposed to make a spatter. And this little looks like a folder icon with a bunch of brushes. Um, if you press that you get your brush presets. Let's go to the brush tip shape. And you can see down here, this is what kind of a line it'll give you. If you change your spacing, it will give you a different effect. And you can test it out here. And now instead of that solid line it was giving me, it's, it's giving me a sp spaced out spatters. If I go to scattering, I can scatter them. So now it's not just going in a straight line. Um, if I go to color dynamics, I can have the hue jitter turned on and it will change colors for me automatically. It's orange, yellow, purple, it's giving me different colors. I'll turn all that back off. I think I did a video that showed more, a little more detail on how to use that. Uh, the other thing is your menu here. You can grab this little corner and drag it out larger if you want to see the whole thing at once without having to scroll. This little gear has all kinds of things here you can do. Um, you can load new brushes in here. Uh, this right here is the default brush set. You can, which you can see I've downloaded quite a few. These that say SS. Um, but you can choose assorted and you can either replace the current brushes or you can append them to the end and I like to append. So now I have a whole different set of brushes that I can play with that do all kinds of things. So. And I actually downloaded some. These are pretty nice. Um, this is uh, eye brushes. And I'm going to just replace them so you can see them. If I pick a uh, set of eyes here, and let me change my color back to black. I can just that easily draw a set of eyes. And um, some of these are default um, the basic brushes. Those are something that comes default. Now, some people might have a hard time seeing this, so there is the option of changing this to the large thumbnail, and you get a much bigger um, picture that you can go by. Um, or you can do a stroke. And then you can see what kind of stroke the brush, just whatever it is that you like. I personally like the small thumbnail. And then now after I've been playing with it, I lost my original brushes that it was the default. So it's easy. You just hit reset brushes. OK. And I've got my brushes back. Um, say I was using let me load the calligraphy brushes because they're slanted. And I'm going to append those to the end. Okay, so here I have a calligraphy brush. And um, I can write with it as if it's a calligraphy pen, although I'm not a very good, very good with it. But I can do that. 
Um, say I didn't like the angle, I wanted to, to angle the opposite direction, I just moved that arrow and now it's going the opposite direction. And put it back to the original. Okay. Now there are I told you that I have a whole bunch of brushes that I have downloaded from the internet so I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to go out here. I like this website. It's called deviantart.com and I'll try to remember to put a link to that in the description. But here in the uh, search box I just typed in Halloween brushes and hit search. And I really like these. Now this lady has um, terms of use and you really should read and follow her terms of use. She's giving you the freedom to use these but she does want you to give her credit for her brushes and I don't blame her. If you don't want to give her credit you can buy a license. I think it's three dollars to buy a license. So we will download these. And once that downloads, it is a zip file. It will open in uh, Win. Um, so this is the files. So we will extract two. Now you want to put these somewhere that you know where they are. I personally keep mine in my download folder. Um, so you just need to put these where you know how to find them. And I actually have already downloaded them once, but I'm going to go ahead and say yes to all and just replace them. Now let's go back to Photoshop. And we're going to load brushes. When you go to where those are, and this is this one was called SS Halloween Vectors. And I'm going to load those brushes. And there they are. They always go to the end. So I'm going to, just so you can see these, what they look like, I'm going to fill my page here. Ooh, that's red. Let's try a little more orange. I'm going to fill my page here and then I'm going to go back to my brushes and let's see, I turned my brush color back to black and here it looks like a bat and it's way too big for my screen. And there you go. And now you have these cool Halloween brushes you can use in a project. These would be really neat if you were wanting to make um, Halloween party invitations or a Halloween calendar or things like that. But there are so many brushes available on DeviantArt. I couldn't even begin to tell you how many there are. Um, and you don't, if you just type in Photoshop brushes, and you don't have to do just Halloween. There are literally thousands of brush sets in here um, that you can download. And you just keep hitting load more, load more, and there's more and more and more. Those people are great. Okay, uh, go back. I get a regular brush again. It's like strange brush freaks me out. Okay, now we have a pencil tool and the pencil tool actually has um, the same brushes that your um, pen tool has for the most part except for these. These are a little different. Um, let me clear this. So if we get, this is just a, a regular round brush turn that size up. So here's what a brush looks like. I mean a pencil. Let me go to the brush. Same size brush. 
Okay, let's make it a hard brush. You can see the difference. This is much smoother. Um, I personally don't use the pencils, but you may find a use for them. You can uh, do the same thing here as you did on the other. You've got all these brushes that you can load. Uh, anything you load to the pencils will also go to the brushes and vice versa. So, And actually, I think they also go to the eraser if you have. Uh, let's just check. Yeah, same thing. So um, no matter which, if you're using pen, pencil, or eraser, you have the same brush set. I'll clear this. And I'm moving along faster than I thought I would, so I think I'll go to the color replacement tool. And I'm going to switch pictures here. This um, Nicki Minaj, if she really likes pea green, and there's no pea green in here, what you can do, um, here's pea green right here in my color swatches. I'm going to choose that color. And this is color replacement. So the first color I click on, well, actually, it's set, I've got it set to continuous sampling. So say I wanted to turn this pink to pea green. Now I have to be careful and only brush over the pink because it's on continuous sampling. See, I got into the purple there a little bit, so it started changing that purple. I'm going to go back. Now, if I change the setting here to sample once, as long as I don't click again, well, all right, cooperate. That's well, not working. I don't know why. Anyway, I don't use this tool, so. Um, and this is to sample a background swatch. The background swatch is down here. Right now it's white. I can change that to that pink. Put it back to the background. And now it knows anything that's that color is what I want to change. And why is this not... There we go. I don't know why I was not on the layer. Ah. So now it's only changing the pink color and I can be a little more, um, I don't have to be quite as careful. It, it's not choosing that purple or that orange. So it's helping me change just that color. Um, okay, that's pretty much the color replacement tool. Uh, mixer brush i will switch pictures again. Now the mixer brush is, it's, to me it's a toy. I don't really use it. This is for, if you want to take a picture like this and make it look like a painting, um, you can use your mixer brush. And this is where I told you I was going to come back and talk about these brushes. Um, these are what you use for painting with. So this is, let me bring that size up. Uh, this is a uh, round point stiff brush. Now if I go to the brush presets and hit the brush tip shape, I can turn that stiffness down and make it a little more soft bristled. I can change the angle, the thickness, the link. I can do all kinds of things here. Um, so I'm going to hit Alt and I'm going to choose my colors. I want to choose right here and what that did is it chose a multitude of colors near where I clicked. Um, and now because this is uh, straight lines, I'm going to do a little trick here. If you click at the top here and then hold down the shift key and click at the bottom, it'll draw a straight line for you. Click at the top, 
hold down shift, click at the bottom, and it'll make a straight line. Or you can do it freehand if you want to. It may, may look more painterly if you do it freehand. I'm just not very uh, good at making straight lines. Looks like I do okay up and down, but I have a hard time going side to side. So really what you're doing is you've got paint in your brush and you have paint on the canvas and you are mixing the two together. If you don't want to destroy your original, which is probably a good idea not to do that, like I just did it, do a new layer. Make sure you check sample all layers. And now this way you can do your painting but it's non-destructive. It has not changed anything in the original. If I make that uh, invisible, you can see I have not changed the original. Uh, there's all kinds of brushes here. Uh, each one gives you a different kind of effect. This one is like thin, thin hairs, thin bristles. Um, and apparently my RAM's running low because my things are getting harder to uh, open. It's a fan brush. Um, and, and this is where it might come in handy to turn the fans. Turn it this direction. If you want to use that to do your painting with. Um, this is not my thing. So I don't have a lot of practice with this. But, that is that one. And I think that's it for brushes today. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.